<laughs> Give me just a second here. Sorry, I just really wanted to Instagram this. <laughs> so my first reaction when I learned that I was graduating with high honors and was therefore expected to give a speech in front of my classmates and 3,500 of their relatives was, are you uh, kidding me? I slammed my computer shut, ran into the living room, curled up in a ball, and may or may not have cried. I didn't tell anyone of my news for days. I felt like I had absolutely no advice to reflect on. I mean, really, honestly, what was I going to say? Hi, I'm Amanda. I am 22 years old, and my number one goal as of right now is to not be forced to move into my parents' basement. <laughs> but I did what any self-respecting millennial does when faced with a difficult situation they are ill-equipped to deal with. I drank an entire bottle of red wine and I Googled it. <laughs> I was so sure by the end of my research session I would have the inspiration for a Jack Kerouac scroll of a speech. Alas, it was not to be. One, I was sans Benzedrine. Two, all of the graduation speeches I found from Steve Jobs to Barack Obama were not quite what I wanted to say. They rang a little hollow to me, as if they came from a time era I wasn't a part of. Ten years ago, when young women and men were graduating, telling them their best years were ahead of them seemed truthful. When people extolled the virtues of investing in a college education, it was easy and simple to see the payoff. Unfortunately, it's not ten years ago. We are a college class that's graduating into a job market where the unemployment rate for 18 to 25 year olds is a staggering 27%. Good Magazine recently reported that as of 2011, one out of every two college graduates is either jobless or underemployed. We're a graduating class where the average student loan debt is slightly more than $25,000. What's more, I'm sure a lot of us in here, like me, think that only $25,000? <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good deal. I felt it was important to acknowledge these facts because they weigh heavily in all of our minds. I cannot think of a single conversation I've had with one of my peers about the future that hasn't devolved into worrying. Worrying about moving, about finding a job, worrying that if you find a job that it just won't be enough to make ends meet. Worrying that with a staggering load of student loan debt, we won't be able to purchase a house someday or pursue a graduate degree. Worrying that no matter how far we dig our feet into the ground and work, we'll never have the life we want. And we have worked hard. I challenge anyone who lambasts our age group for being entitled and lazy to talk to the people I know. People who work an unpaid internship and two or three part-time jobs after graduation. Or people who send out six, seven, eight resumes a day just trying to get their foot in the door somewhere, anywhere, doing anything. Nobody I know has been handed anything. So, now that we're all feeling really great and hopeful, <laughs> This is the part of the speech I really struggled to turn around. I thought about quoting some kind of timely pop song, you know, a casual, it's always darkest before the dawn, we are young, let's set the world on fire, what doesn't kill you, make you stronger, never mind, I'll find someone like you and I'm glad you came. <laughs> some pop songs being clearly more relevant than others. The suggestion to quote Aragorn from Return of the King was given to me, which though relevant, seemed slightly melodramatic in this case. The truth is though, I'm still not quite sure how to turn this around. Because hi, I'm Amanda, I'm 22 years old, and my number one goal as of right now is to not be forced to move back into my parents' basement. I don't know anything except for how I feel. 
A lot of the times I feel scared and uncertain, and I really resent feeling like I have nowhere to put my roots down. And there have been times I wish that I had attended a less expensive school or had pursued a science degree, which, given my high school grades in chemistry, doesn't even really make sense. As I was writing this speech, I realized that the weight of my student loans and the uncertainty of the future seems worth it if I think about the experiences and opportunities I've had these last four years. It's worth it if I think about the people, both professional and personal, that would not be in my life if I hadn't come to this school. And in many ways, I think we're lucky because we're in the position of having next to nothing to lose, which means we can do what we want to do, make the changes we want to make, and go where we want to go. If your youth is what makes you strong and defines the kind of person you'll become, let's become masters at embracing uncertainty. Let's teach ourselves that ambiguity doesn't need to be feared. Every unexpected twist or turn that happens is just another story for your storybook. And warning, I'm about to use a really cheesy segue. It's time to close this chapter. But education is more than a classroom. It's a series of events. You just never know what you're going to have to learn next. And that's not just OK. It's downright beautiful. It's also time for me to end my speech. Before I step away from the podium, I want to urge you all to put aside your worries, pop some champagne, and just celebrate getting your undergraduate degree. <laughs> it's truly and honestly something remarkable. And with that, Congratulations, class of 2012. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> You've earned it. Thank you.